Yes, hello, how are you? <laughs> First, I would like to warmly welcome all guests. And today I would like to present a case concerning the rare cause of gastrocole thickening. 68-year-old female was complaining of fatigue, weight loss, and abdominal pain since four months. And due to these symptoms, the patient was referred to the medical center for further diagnosis. Her concomitant disorders included rheumatoid arthritis and left-sided lingual hernia with episodic pain. During the diagnostic process, we could observe laboratory abnormalities, including mild leukocytosis and Crohn's disease anemia. The chest CT examination and phonoscopy were normal. However, abdominal CT examination revealed hypodense thickened wall of the stomach in fundus, suggesting a tumor with a diameter about 3.6 centimeters. As a next diagnostic step, we performed gastroscopy, uh, which showed mucosal changes visible in the fundus and body of the stomach, including swollen mucosa with thickened folds, ecchymosis, and hyperemia. Additionally, in the fundus, uh, we observed tumorous mucosa about 4 centimeters in diameter. And uh, in general, the stomach wall well um, reacted on air in an esophation. After meticulous examination, we took multiple biopsies with jumbo forceps and the path results showed inflammation with non-specific changes. So taking into account um, cleaning and previously performed imaging examinations, as well as the result of gastroscopy, we decided to perform EUS assessment with EUS guided biopsy. And during the EUS examination in the site of abnormal mucosa in pandas, we observed thickening of stomach wall up to 20 millimeters with loss of walls layer stratification. And EUS um, examination was finished with uh, US guided biopsy using 22 gauge fine needle. And the final result of PAT assessment showed a negative gain sustaining and negative passive staining. And also in all samples, there was no presence of malignant cells. However, in all samples, um, our pathologists observe a positive Congo red staining visible here. So it decided about the diagnosis, which were the stomach amyloidosis, secondary to rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, when it comes to the secondary stomach amyloidosis, uh, this condition occurs as a response to a variety of infections, inflammatory or neoplastic insults. And amyloid deposition occurs mainly in the mucosa, involving muscularis mucosa with close proximity to the different structure. And the secondary amyloidosis uh, and the GA tract involvement um, occurs in about 5% of all case cases and mainly um, in primary and secondary amyloidosis and the stomach as a second the most frequent site in GA tract involvement. And as I mentioned before, when it comes to the secondary amyloidosis, um, the disease leading to this are mainly chronic systemic inflammation, but also neoplastic disorders like RCC and GIS. And symptoms occurs in about 10 up to 70% of all cases, uh, including weight loss, leading esophageal reflux, constipation, diarrhea, and even gastric outlet obstruction in most advanced cases. And when we observe a secondary amyloidosis of the GA tract, uh, unfortunately, the diagnosis and prognosis for the patient is poor. And when it comes to the diagnosis of secondary uh, amyloidosis, endoscopic and EOS phages with uh, or without lymph nodes involvement are poorly characterized for differentiation. We can observe a very different um, conditions in which can mimic um, a secondary amyloidosis like hypertrophic gastritis, menetrier disease, primary lymphoma, and even linitis plastica. So the final diagnosis uh, should be based on biopsy, especially with the Congo red staining assessment. So what we should choose, FNA or FNB? So there is no general consensus on the advantage FNB over FNA for US gated biopsy in secondary amyloidosis. So in our case, 22 gauge FNA needle uh, was sufficient to uh, establish the final diagnosis for the patient. Thank you so much for the attention and special thanks to Professor Anna-Marie Hoska-Kozowska and Professor Hossein Nogasha.